Hi there, Weon. I'm very happy to see that you've sent us a set of essays. Let's take a look at what you've written. The first one is the letter for the English and Homestead program. Here's what you wrote. Dear Mr. Brown, I hope this letter finds, here you need an S, this letter finds you well. I'm writing this letter to you, no, I'm writing this letter to tell you a little bit about myself. I am from Brazil, but living at the moment in Dubai, United Arab Emirates, where I live with my husband and daughters since 2007. At the present moment, I am not working. I quit my job last year to take a sabbatical period and take care and take care of family. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, so I like a lot of this, but there are a couple of things that I wanted to see a little different. Let's see. I hope this letter finds you well. Um, my name is, tell us your name. You didn't even, you're introducing yourself. You always start with your name. So, um, just say my name is Wiana Aguilar, uh, and I'm writing this letter to tell you a little bit about myself. Okay, fine, but it's still not 100% clear, even with the inclusion of your name. Remember, um, you're going to visit for the English and Homestead program, so mention that too, okay? Mention it and say, make it a more complete idea. All right, make it a more appropriate introduction. So something like this. Uh, Dear Mr. Brown, I hope this letter finds you well. My name is Wiana Aguilar, and um, I will be staying with you uh, for the duration of the English and Homestay program. I'm writing this letter to tell you a little bit about myself. All right, that makes sense. All right, that's an appropriate introduction. We're explaining why you're writing. What's the context for this letter? All right, that you're writing, you're going to stay with this person for the English and Homestay, okay? So, um, I'm from Brazil, but living at the moment in Dubai, United Arab Emirates, where I live with my husband and daughters, where I have been living. Why? Because it's since 2007. That's a time marker and it requires you to use a perfect tense. So, where I have been living with my husband and daughters since 2007. At the pre present moment, I am not working. Um, now, here, it's not enough to... Um, just have a comma. I thought you needed a stronger linker here. So at the present moment, I am not working since I quit my job last year to take a sabbatical period and take care of my family. All right. So the first paragraph has some errors. Um, part of it is task achievement. Part of it is grammar. But let's move on and see the rest. I would like to kindly ask you about basic information on how it, you need a preparatory subject here, how it is to live in the UK. I have many doubts such as the weather in October, types of clothes to bring, typical food, timings during winter time. In addition, I am curious about your family routines. What do you do during weekends? Okay, so you're supposed to ask some questions. What did you really do? You basically just said, I would like to ask some questions and that's okay. And then here you said, what do you do? That's not really some questions. That's just two. Because the rest of this is really just a list of your doubts. There's no questions here. Okay? You really just kind of had, you kind of just mushed all of these together and made a little list of doubts that you have, of questions that you have. So I would have liked to see this actually be some questions. Now, of course, since this is a formal letter, you need to use a formal style of questions. So you could have said, I have many uh, questions regarding the weather in October. How cool does it get um, typically in this month? Additionally, could you tell me please what types of clothes to bring that would be appropriate for both the climate and for the places I will be going? Um, some additional uh, concerns I have regard typical food eaten in England. Um, as I am a vegetarian, I am wondering if I will be able to find um, cuisine that will suit my dietary needs easily. Okay, so this is what we mean by some questions. Okay, so um, my flight is scheduled to arrive on 25th of October, Saturday at 4 p.m. I'm arriving with Emirates Airline on EK407 flight. Well, we don't say it like that. We say on flight EK407, arriving at Terminal 2. Looking forward to meeting you sincerely. Okay, that the rest of that is fine. So 
it was these two paragraphs where you covered um, these two bullets. Those for me needed a little work, okay? I hope it's clear to you um, what needed work and what wasn't as appropriate as it could be, okay? If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, so it's a little bit of just really fully responding to the task, essentially. So understanding what they mean here by some questions. Doesn't mean one, doesn't mean two. It means at least three. Okay, and to write them fully out, not like a little list here like you did. All right, and then of course that you need to just introduce yourself more appropriately. Um, so that's pretty much it for your task one. I'd like to move on to your task two about international marketing. Okay, here we go. This, no, I guess it's not short. It looks like it's a, at least 260 words. Let's see if I calculate appropriately. Let's see. Okay, it doesn't tell me. All right, it doesn't really matter. It looks like it's definitely um, over in length. So that's, I mean, it's above 250 words. So that's what's important. International marketing is a type of an action that can invade a country. There are many people who agree that this kind of intrusion helps to improve the educational system of the country in focus, bringing new ways of communication, facilitating the exchange of knowledge, and advertising the cultural aspect. I believe this point brings lots of advantages to the country. However, this type of penetration can be sometimes detrimental to the country, helping to change its own identity. Okay, so what I see here, Rihanna, is that you've uh, tried to rephrase the task, and that's, that's good, um, but somewhere I feel like some of the meaning is getting lost. So let's look at this. Um, international marketing is a type of action that can invade a country. Well, okay, um, but I'm not entirely sure. It's like, it's like you immediately took a side. You said it's invasive, it's intrusive, and it's terrible. So I felt like you were kind of immediately taking a side, whereas you needed to start off a little more generally. Okay, so something along the lines of um, um, there is considerable date de there is considerable debate throughout the world whether uh, international marketing um, is a detriment to countries and their sovereignty, or if it's um, uh, a beneficial tool that helps um, unite the world and um, you know provides an exchange of ideas. Okay, that would have been a better way to start. That's one of the m millions of ways you could have started this. Okay, but that would have been a better way. It's a more general kind of idea saying that, look, there are these two different ideas regarding this topic. Okay, so there are many people who agree that this kind of intrusion helps to improve, no S, the educational system of the country in focus. Now, that's a little strange because the word intrusion has a negative meaning and yet here you're saying that um, it improves something so we are kind of having a little bit of incoherence here I'm wondering if maybe instead of intrusion the word you're looking for is actually influence that would have made more sense because then it would have read there are many people who agree that this kind of influence helps to improve the educational system of the country in focus bringing new ways of communication facilitating the exchange of knowledge and ad advertising I didn't understand this cultural aspect that didn't really make a lot of sense to me maybe it just mean and maybe providing insight into the culture maybe um, you know highlights the culture of the um, advertising country I'm not really sure but something like that would have made more sense I believe this point brings lots of advantages to the country all right now which point so you didn't really talk about just one point, especially the previous sentence. It had like a bunch of points. All right. You said one, two, three, you know, four actually. So there were a lot of different points. So that doesn't really work. This type of um, attempt at cohesion really just brings some incoherence because we don't know what you're talking about. What What's the point? So what you really meant to say, I think, is I believe these positive um, aspects of international marketing bring lots of advantages to the country. However, this type of penetration can be sometimes detrimental to the country, helping to change its own identity. So again, look at this. Detrimental, but then helping. Um, it almost feels like it's like a positive thing. So again, it's this kind of incongruence here with some of those words. I think you meant something else. 
Uh, however, this type of penetration can sometimes be de uh, detrimental to the country, uh, causing it to change its identity. That is a more neutral word if you say causing. So I, I, think, I think you understand my point here, I hope. Now, let's talk about another issue here. I'm a little confused here about what your standpoint is. What's your position? Is it in favor or is it against? Is it somewhere in between? It's not really clear because basically you just said, I believe this, but I also believe this. So we're not really clear on where you stand with this. I can't really say that your position is clear. I'm tempted to say that you're 50-50, but um, I'm really just basically guessing. Now, why am I making such a big deal about this? Because it's really important if you're aiming for a band seven that your, um, your position is clear from your introduction. Okay? All right, let's move on. In today's globalized globalized world, it is important that the international marketing helps to advertise the country's image in order to bring more development in many areas. For example, it can show the different goods that a country has to offer, the local heritage, the language they speak. All right, how? How does it do this thing? It opens opportunities also to the inhabitants to participate in international cultural events. Really? How? This kind of action can target the whole country and bring prosperity. Really? How? Why? So what I see here is that you're not developing your ideas. You've got ideas, but they're all very theoretical and you don't go into any effort to um, actually support them, to actually develop them, and to really flush out the argument fully. This is something that's going to be a disadvantage to you in the exam because they do expect you to develop these ideas and to go into more detail, to go and extend your ideas more with support, with examples, with some illustration of what you're talking about. Next paragraph. On the other hand, if we think more closely to this question, all right, grammatically and lexically this is wrong. What does that mean to think more closely to this question? If we look more closely at this question, maybe that would work, but let's see. International marketing can sometimes, S, be very aggressive which can add to the country's imposed ideas that the country is not ready to accept those in that moment or can either change the habits of its population. All right, I'm afraid that that's a little incoherent. I don't know what country we're talking about. You're talking about country here, country here. Which country? The host country? The advertising country? I'm not sure. Okay? Um, and what does that mean? They're not ready to accept those in that moment or can either change the habits of that. It's grammatically, it's incorrect. So it just basically leads to a loss of coherence here where I'm really not sure what you're telling us. I also have to say that I find that as a paragraph, it's rather underdeveloped. Take a look at this. Your introduction is even longer than your body paragraph. And that's a sign that you haven't extended your paragraph enough. Your um, introduction really just needs to have three basic elements, maybe two, okay, but essentially three basic elements. Um, it doesn't need to, I mean, this is pretty much the, the maximum that I suggest an introduction be, um, but the fact that this was so short should be an indication to you that you needed to do more here with this paragraph, okay? So there's issues, first of all, with the coherence that I didn't understand some of your ideas. You weren't, you didn't really express them in a very clear fashion, and also you needed to develop more. All right, so let's look at your conclusion. Finally, having above the both points of view, I think that it is necessary to have, I think, I don't know what you mean. Do you mean, um, I'm not really sure what this word is supposed to mean. Regulation, regulatory, maybe. Action from the government in judging and accepting what is good for its own people. What can work for a country does not necessarily work for another one. All right, here I insist on do not, because, does not, because um, we don't use contractions in IELTS in task two, especially. Um, uh, so you don't want to use this kind of language. No haven't, no doesn't, no didn't, no wasn't, weren't, and so forth. Okay, no contractions. So you have to write the word fully out. Um, okay, so I think that we've analyzed this pretty extensively. Um, I saw that task achievement was a big issue in this essay. You can see that I'm really trying to find out your word count here. I'm certain it's over 250 words, but I'm still curious. I just want to know how close I was. Um, in any case, it was really task achievement that was an issue, um, as well as some grammar. It led to incoherence, a little bit of grammar, a little bit of uh, lexical resource. So um, it's an essay that I think needs a little work. 
Um, I would like to encourage you to sign up for the course. I think the course would fit the bill entirely. It's exactly the kind of um, a program that you need to help you kind of overcome some of these um, obstacles and some of these weaknesses with your writing. Um, it'll give you the structure so you can have really cohesive, really coherent, really well-structured essays. It'll help you understand how to develop your essay so that it's, it's on topic every time. Um, with lots of sentence examples and just tons of tips to help you really, really, really improve. So if that's something that you can look into, I definitely encourage you to do so. And I look forward to working with you. Good luck.